It's gonna be a year of incredible advantages. It's gonna be a year of extreme favor. This is gonna be a year where blessings still flow and miracles still happen. But this is also gonna be a year of exceptional manifestation. 2023. It's gonna be our year of unsolicited and no clothes. Just alone <laughs> without a friend or just another number with a tragic end but God you didn't see fit to let none of these things be every day by your power you keep on keeping me and I want to say thank you Lord for all you've done for me the verse went on to say we got to go they're folks without homes living out in the streets and the drug habit some say right in the church they just can't beat they're mongers and robbers no place seems to be safe but God you've been my protection <laughs> every step of the way and I want to say Could have been me with no clothes. I'm ah, just alone. Without family or friend. Or just another number. With a Kojic end. But God, you didn't see fit to let none of these things be. Every day by your power. You keep on keeping me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. For you've done for me. Come on, somebody tell them thank you. I wish I had a piece of church. We tear this place up. Somebody tell them thank you. Woo! Thank you. When you look back over this year, you can even remember moments where you thought you wouldn't gonna make it. Even if you hadn't gone that far, there were times you just thought you couldn't take it. But it kept you. <laughs> and he was there all the time. Come on, look at somebody and tell them he was there all the time. All the time, all the time. Y'all, y'all sit down so I can calm down. Sit down. And if he hasn't done it yet, <laughs> we still got two more weeks. 
He's a God that can do the impossible. He's a God that can make ways out of no ways. There's still time in the fourth quarter to win the game. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Vision Sunday 2024, here we are. Yeah. <laughs> uh, expecting to hear what is yet ahead. It is our Lord's Supper Sunday, and I want to, I hear echo, praise the Lord. Yeah, there are, our, we have visitors in the house. I heard somebody holler glory. Somebody holler back glory. That's how we used to do in old church when somebody hollered glory, somebody would holler, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> ah, glory to God. Any visitors in the house? I'm trying to get through. I got a short page, just not even a half a page. Any visitors in the house? Hey. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, on behalf of Tridestone Church of Chicago, on behalf of our bishop, our tiers of leadership, we praise God for you and welcome you to our home. Listen, anytime our doors are open, you can come on in. Make sure you bring your shouting shoes because we're going to get our praise on, all right? We love you and again, welcome. Come on, Tridestone Nation. Let's bless God for this woman of God. You may be seated in the presence of God and to certainly to those who are watching us from near and from far, welcome to our cyber sanctuary. Come on, one more time, Tried Stone. Let's welcome those who are watching us. Let's just walk through again our highlights for the week. Certainly our bishop just blessed us on, on Sunday and on Monday. Hallelujah. Amen. So we praise God for that. Our leadership meeting on Wednesday where uh, the leaders just got together and talked business just for a little bit. Uh, and, and then on Saturday, our food pantry was open. Our children's church Christmas program. Ah, yeah will happen on yesterday as well as well as our Christian education Sabbath school replay with Elder Larice White. Can we praise God for everything that's happening at our church? And I know how you feel, but we're officially on break. There will be no walk in the spirit Bible class on tomorrow. Going to get it out. <laughs> and as, as well, our spiritual vitamin midweek Bible class is on break. We want you to spend this time enjoying family. We want you to spend this time pacing yourself. Don't overdo it. In the spending, in the eating, in nothing. Get some time with God and enjoy the season. We love you and we want you to know that we're continuing to pray for you. I'm going to turn the service over to our praise team and then the next speaking voice that you will hear will be that of hopefully our bishop, Bishop Simon Gordon. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How many want to bless the Lord all oh, your soul? And all that is within you. Bishop said it last, last week, uh, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. Because he daily loaded us with benefits. So we should be in a position where we blessing God every day. Every time we get an opportunity to wake up, we should say, thank you, Lord, because you don't know. He, you, when you praise God, you're loading the gun. And when you load the gun, you get ready to shoot, something's taking off. God is putting it in the atmosphere for you. As soon as you get ready to say, thank you, Jesus, he's opening up doors. As soon as you say, praise the Lord, he's, he he's operating in healing for you. As soon as you say, thank you, Jesus, I thank you for healing. I wake you for waking me up this morning. He's opening up doors for blessings for you to walk in. He's opening up favor for you. He's giving you an opportunity to walk into deliverance. He's giving you an opportunity to walk in uh, being in a place where your children are saved. Somebody's being delivered from, deliver uh, from, from addiction. When you get ready to give God some praise, you blessing God and he's going to Daily load you with benefits. Come on, give God some praise. Give God some glory. Come on, open up your mouth and tell God, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God, we're back 
for you are truly great and greatly to be praised. Come on, give God some praise. The song says, I will. Oh, my soul. So many great things for me. Over your life, you can see how you can be delivered. You've been set free. All because God has made a way. He has done great things. Bless his holy. Bless his holy. Bless his name. Come on, we're gonna go to the special. We're gonna give God the highest praise that we can give Him in this place. We're gonna lift our voices. Hallelujah! 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 We're gonna give God some praise and sing. Hallelujah! Come on, lift up your voice and sing, everybody. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Come on, use your ammunition. Give God some praise. Hallelujah! Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us sing our hands together. Give God some praise. Lift up your voice and say hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, we can go to the next part. Because Lord, you're worthy of the glory and the honor. Hallelujah. You say, Lord, you're worthy of the glory and the honor. And the honor. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Lord, you're worthy of the glory and the honor. We give you all the glory, 
We magnify you for being great. And great means to be pretty. Come on, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. And lift up your voice and sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, use your hand and cry out. Hallelujah. Come on, one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Last time, lift up your voice and cry out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise. Come on, give God some praise. He's done too much for you. He's opened up doors. He's kept you from danger seen and unseen. Hallelujah. Just stand to your feet. Let's give God, amen, a great hand clap of praise for this year of unsolicited abundance. Amen. But God has blessed us, and he has kept us, and he has done wonderful things. And despite all we've been, look at somebody, despite all I've been through, I'm still here and alive. Amen. You thank God for being alive. Come on, take an opportunity, and let's give him glory. Amen. For not just covering us, but covering us well. Amen. Not just for keeping us, but for keeping us well. Not for just loving us, but for loving us well. Amen. And not just for sustaining us, but for sustaining us, sustaining us well. Amen. Give God a praise for doing a good job in your life. I can't give him a praise for doing a good job in your life. Give him a good, give him a praise for doing a good job. Amen. Man, in your life, he is good. And we thank him for being good the way he is. Constantly, we see his handiwork, and we know that God is good, and he blesses us continuously. I want to thank all of you, um, amen, for uh, we have had a tremendous, a wonderful year this year. Uh, God has blessed us. I look forward to us turning over to the next year on this Vision Sunday, and we thank you all for coming. And I know uh, uh, that I've already looked at uh, there are uh, uh, hundreds that are watching on all of our mediums. I ain't paying attention. I got calls from different, because you know, leaders know I expect them to be in the house at Vision, on Vision Day, Vision Night. And I got calls for those who were not uh, unable to come or those who were sick or whatever along that line. But God is in the blessing business. He's in the healing business. Amen. Amen. And your, your return for your faith is going to be awesome. Your return for your faith is going to be awesome. Let me say it to you again. Your return for your faith is going to be awesome. And as we stand, as we stand, of course, I will be celebrating again. Uh, uh, the church with me celebrating those who came uh, uh, three, the three closest to the theme. One person almost got it exactly. <laughs> just missed it by a few words uh, but several were close uh, to it, uh, several were close to the theme in different areas. All of you did a fund fundamentally wonderful and foundationally great job so I want uh, just to call those names if you hear just lift your hand when I call your name Jasmine Ward, Sabrina Givens uh, Sharon Lowe uh, 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 Carol, Carolyn Davis uh, Brenda Price Sigla, Cherie Henderson, Sam, that's the see here, Sam Maxwell, uh -huh, um, Martise Tony, Tracy Small, Irma uh, Walker, amen. Uh, somebody did the ushers as a group. Did y'all do it? Did ushers, y'all did a group thing? <laughs> the ushers as a group. Linda Smith, Ralph Hill, Carolyn Davis. Uh, Loretta Thomas, uh, uh, Patrice, Patricia Sharif Williams, uh, uh, James Jones, Bobby Alexander. Uh, your hand didn't go up, Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Pamela Briggs, Rosalind Reddick, uh, Ronnell Brown, that's it, uh, Cheryl Rosario, Teresa Calloway. Uh, I, don't, I don't know who put the initials in DMR. I guess they want me to. Who, oh, that's you, Dion. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, Dion. Okay. 
but Jess, Jesse, Jesse, Jesse McNeely, LaDonna Bracey, Donald Adams, Donald, your hand didn't go up. <laughs> <laughs> Larice White, S Sunita Kapla, she's sick today. We're praying for her. Netra Deuce, they got sickness in their family today. Uh, Lynn Munson, Rashawn Randall, Lily Stewart, these are those who took the time to fill out the card that I received the notification for. And um, many of you were very, very close. And I want the whole church to give them a great hand for taking the time. <laughs> Amen. Amen. To do so. Thank you. I thank you. Thank you for your stewardship and your desire to be right in alignment and to know what God is doing in this day in time as we thank him for being wonderful in our lives. Let's have a word of prayer. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you for your excellence. We thank you for being incredible. We thank you for this moment you've given us to share you again. Thank you because you've opened up this portal of blessings uh, that you have ordained particularly for us. And we are exceedingly happy and glad that you are our keeper, the lover of our soul. You manifest greatness for us. And because of who you are, we are excited about what you're going to do next in our lives. Thank you for being a great keeper. Thank you for every ministry. Thank you for your handiwork. Now, God, bless your word and give us what we need. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, it's all right to clap. You're the keeper of my soul. You're the one that makes me Lift 
those holy hands. Lord, we say yes to you. Lord, we love you. Speak these words for me. Lord, give me what I need as I head into my future. I'll use it. I'll be blessed by it. And I'll give you credit for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Now give them a praise with your mouth, with your hands, with everything that's in you. Come on, open up and give God some glory. Hallelujah. You may be seated. You may be seated. Hallelujah. We are so excited about this vision day and this opportunity to share with you and thank you for coming and sharing. And with those who are watching today, I ask that you would share quickly on all of those social media met, uh, uh, areas that we are functioning on at this point, at this moment and share with your particular audiences uh, this particular vision statement as it points toward 2024. This has been a great year. Amen. Amen. God has blessed us. This has been a great year. And we are grateful, not just to be alive, but we're grateful that God has done a great job in taking care of us. And we thank him for doing so. But I need to tell you this year of unsolicited abundance, as we push toward our next year, there's something we need to pay attention to right at the beginning. And that is that faith is very much about looking towards your future and being excited about it. Mm -hmm. Somebody has speak that to you and they say, faith, faith is about looking towards your future and being excited about it. One of the reasons you have faith is that you cannot let your faith live without your excitement. If you're trusting God, you've got to look toward your own future and be excited about what God is going to do in your future. And so uh, the statement that leads us to, in our dialogue to open up is, is that I want you to embrace your journey because your power will reveal itself in your transitions. <laughs> Understand that much of where you're going has to do with what you've been able to go through. <laughs> Somebody tell your neighbor, it's what I've been able to go through. A lot of people don't understand the depth, the wealth, the strength, the power, the authority that rests in your very being. But all of it very much is attached to the fact that you've been able to transition out of some things and through some things that have allowed you to take the stance and be the person that you are right now. That's why you never get mad at God about going through. You thank God for your journey because you know that you have a victory that is coming right after it. Somebody can help me brag and just say, I do have a victory coming right after this. Yeah, it's important to understand here. Listen here, your power will reveal itself through your transitions. So I believe your next change will lead to your best change. Somebody help me tell your neighbor, your next change is leading to your best change. Let's, let's straighten this out so everybody can be real clear. These vision statements are strictly prophetic. So you understand that from the beginning of the message to the end of the message, I'm not going to just talk about where you are, but I'm going to talk about where you're about to go. I'm not going to talk about what history said without telling you what history is, has declared and has manifested and that what will come next in our, pros, in, our, in our area. This is why I have a clear statement to you. Don't be afraid of your journey. Mm. Somebody speak that to your neighbor. Say, don't be afraid of your journey. You got a journey coming. Don't be afraid of your journey. Remember the words of Prophet Samuel, the Prophet Samuel, who, who Israel overruled when they wanted Saul to be their king. And understand God had to come and console him in 1 Samuel 8, verses 4 through 7. And it ended by these particular words. Samuel was feeling bad that they wanted Saul rather than God to be their leader. And so God tells him, he ends his words by saying, Samuel, they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me that I should not rule over them. Understand the challenge was that they settled in their minds that they wanted to serve God, but only through the means that they had chosen for themselves. 
And yet Samuel desperately attempted to get Israel to take this posture, put God first. And soon after they found pleasure in their new King Saul, their good looking King Saul, in comes Goliath, the Philistine, the Philistine giant among them and God's people and their king were aff afraid. See, they chose what could not sustain them. And understand, it took the rise of a lad named David, who was a, a kid after God's own heart, to kill Goliath and eventually become that king of Israel. But let's look at the text where God had dialogue with Samuel before David even came on the scene. In 1 Samuel 6, 16 through 25, the word says, listen to what is going on. God has Samuel, Samuel talk to them. He has been trying to convince them they will not listen. So he's going to tell them some things about the stance God's going to take just because you've been hard-headed. Mm. Let's stop for a few minutes and tell you, look at somebody and say, listen here, I've been hard-headed too sometimes. Go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so here's the stance that God takes. He says, just because you've been hard-headed, I want you to understand kind of how I'm going to look at dealing with you. First Samuel 16 through 25, he says, Now therefore stand and see this great thing, which the Lord will do before your eyes. Is it not wheat harvest day? Yeah, this is your time to harvest your wheat. He said, what I'm going to do, I'm going to call upon the Lord, and he shall send thunder and rain. And you shall perceive and see see that your wickedness is great which ye have done in the sight of the Lord in asking you a king. So Samuel called on the Lord and the Lord sent thunder and rain that day and all the people greatly feared the Lord and Samuel. Mm -hmm. And all the people said unto Samuel, pray for thy servant unto the Lord thy God, uh, that we die not. Come on, stop God from doing this. Sound like when Moses had to deal with him. And, 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 and for we have added unto all our sins this evil as we have asked for a king. In verse 19, 1 Samuel 16 and 20. And the people said, and Samuel said unto the people, fear not, ye have done all this wickedness. Turn yet turn not aside from following the Lord, but serve him with all of your heart. Notice what that term is here. He said, God saying, He know you not all bad. You just keep choosing what I wouldn't have for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Somebody here talk to your neighbor, just tell your neighbor, you not all bad. You just keep choosing what God don't want you to choose. Oh, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> and so he lays it out and says, listen, it is your decisions that have you in this predicament. Somebody talk to your name and say, your decisions can get you in a predicament. So he says, I have some advice. Oh, I know I'm talking to somebody already. <laughs> Yeah. He says, he says, this is what I want you to do here. T turn ye not aside, for then should ye go after vain things, which cannot profit nor deliver, for they are vain. So just because you messed up, don't go buck wild. Mm. <laughs> Somebody help me here. Just talk to your name and say, just because you messed up, you can't afford to lose it right now. <laughs> Don't, don't lose it just because you messed up. Make sure that you stand where you have to stand here. Verse 22, God will not desert you from immature, for immaturity and ignorance. Get this. He will not desert you for immaturity and ignorance. Verse 22, for the Lord will not forsake his people for his great name's sake, because it had pleased the Lord to make you his people. Moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you, but I will teach you the good and the right way. Verse 24 lays that thing out and basically says here, here in 1 Samuel, uh, this, this, eight, this, this, this eight chapter, he says, only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart for consider how great things he has done for you. Notice how he lays this out here. But if you still do wickedness, ye shall be consumed both you and your king. That's what he's talking to. They pick, they pick Saul. And so what is he saying? He's saying get wisdom so you can live 
and then have faith in God so you can be sustained. This is here he dealt with them because all of us have made some dumb decisions at times. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, yes, you too. Tell them you too. With your smart self. All of us have been too smart, as the old folk used to say, for your own bridges. Uh, doing stuff or saying stuff, thinking stuff or handling stuff that God never gave you the authority to handle, to reconcile, to finish, or to deal with. But have faith in God. Help me tell somebody, have faith in God. Because faith, I told you from the beginning, is very much about looking towards the future uh, and being excited about it. But also, faith includes expecting the unexpected. Uh, say it in the room. Say, faith includes uh, expecting the unexpected few more points before I get to the text. No need to compete with God's anointed appointments. Mm -hmm. Said in the room, say no need, no need to compete with, compete with God's anointed appointments. You see, there's a creed of being a team player. There's a clear creed of understanding there's some things I have to do if I'm going to be on this team and we're going to work it out together. I just got through watching last night. Uh, I watched the Lakers win that, 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 you know, that, that, that early tournament. Some of y'all watched it. I mean, some of y'all, and hopefully some of y'all watched it. <laughs> and so uh, uh, you watched it. Thank you, thank you. And so you know, if it's sports, you know, you know, I'm, you know, I'm kind of really man, man. I like man, man. I do the you know, it's sports. I'm, you know, I'm on, I'm on it. I, I digress. Let me go on back. The whole deal is <laughs> that, that some of y'all watched it, and in watching it, they won because they came together as a team. Mm -hmm. And see, here's the whole deal is, don't, let, don't, don't compete with God's anointed appointments. Don't allow pride to make you compete with others when you have not surpassed them in certain matters. When you have not undertaken matter, certain major conditions and situations they had to go through, and you have not supported in the team working force for their successes, and have not done it in the time frame, in this time frame, under this support system, if you have not done it other than that, just be humble and join in and let's do great things together. <laughs> That's the team creed. Tell your neighbor, that's the team creed. Yeah, we got to be in a point where we know I got to join in and get in where I fit in so we can do this thing together because it was never meant for any of us to all do it all by ourselves. This is why the theme this year is coming from one of the most prophetic areas of the Bible. It's coming from the book of Daniel chapter 11. And I didn't take you there early because the, the, the chapters in Daniel are very difficult for those who have not have a whole lot of history to grab hold of because the, the chapters of the book of Daniel and of Zechariah and of Ezra and, uh, and Nehemiah and, uh, and Jeremiah all speak not only to the Babylonian captivity but speak to uh, eschatology the doctrine of future things and the book of Revelation and so the types and the symbols and the si signs that are in them speak to us understanding how God was leading them and teaching them how situations was going to happen and in those days God would make it happen prophetically and through visions and through signs and through wonders in the Old Testament specifically and the dreams and the visions did not make sense to those who were having them but they just wrote them verbatim and now they make sense hundreds and thousands of years later to us mm. let's make some sense of this here because with a national government that is in disarray fighting and supporting battles on several fronts for every and several uh, for several countries while not fully taking care with equity challenges on the home front with local governments wrestling with how to carry out the simple tenets of faith given by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ like Matthew 25 42 through 45 it's an easy one Jesus wasn't playing when he said it he says for I was hunger hungry and you gave me no meat I was thirsty and you gave 
gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you took me not in. I was naked and you clothed me not. I was in prison and ye visited me not. Verily I say unto you, you say, when did I do this? In so much as you did to one of these least of these. Ye did it unto me. Lord have mercy. And so we see then that their dilemma is very similar to the dilemma we face, Elder, in 2024. The text says from David's time to Daniel's time, that first story I gave you to Daniel's time, Israel didn't get it. And here then are the results that will lead us to our text. The results were that in 1st, 2nd Kings 17 and 20, that the Lord rejected all the seed of Israel and he afflicted them and delivered them into the hand of spoilers until he had cast them out of his sight. Interesting, God said, I done got sick of y'all. Mm. Uh, somebody tell your neighbor, you don't want God to get sick of you. So God said, clearly, I've gotten sick of you. And the results was in 2 Kings 17 and 23 that Assyria was allowed to carry Israel out of their own land. Get who I said, Assyria. Once Israel was removed, they brought in people from five nations, including the Babylonians. In, 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 in 2 Kings 17 and 24, and notice that the king of Assyria brings in the Babylonians to dwell in the land before Hezekiah. Hezekiah, the coming king of Judah in chapter 20, whoever shows them the treasures uh, that they can end up capturing and, uh, and, and, and conquering based on. Realize that it was not that long ago in 2 Kings 15 and 13 that King Uzziah, who was the king of Judah, uh, was living. And remember, it's when he died in Isaiah 6 that Isaiah says that the year the king Uzziah I died, I saw the Lord. And you have to understand, that's when he said, if you want somebody to go, send me, I'll go. That's where we get that from. And here in comes this situation. Israel lost their home for a season, but they were still the God's anointed and appointed. Tell your neighbor, you might lose some stuff by making bad decisions. But that doesn't mean God disqualifies you. <laughs> so they're, they're, they're called to be his anointed and appointed wherever they ended up being. Mm -hmm. And so God made them, so you won't use it how I told you to use it, but you're going to use it. Come on here. Somebody here talk to your name and say, you're going to use it. I don't know who I'm talking to here, but listen here, you ain't going to be able to abandon what God said you had to do. The calling that's on your life is not going to disappear or dissipate because you just decided that you're not worthy or you're not ready or you want to do something else. You're going to use it. Yeah, you're going to use it. You're going to use it. Or you're going to die trying not to lose it. You're going to be in a position because he's not going to let you go. Look at your name and say, you're not going to get out of this. Go on. And so he lays it out for them to understand that I set you up and you're not going to just get out of this without doing what you're called to do and recognize then what happens to the real leaders of Israel. You see, here's the point. When the enemy of God finds himself in trouble, the believer becomes popular. <laughs> Somebody here talk to your neighbor and say, all you got to do is live it and be it, live it and be it. When your enemies find themselves in trouble, they'll come to you and ask you to pray when they wouldn't do nothing for you. Understand, they'll ask you, understand, this is how it lays out. It's an interesting look here because the enemy wants to know your secret relationship with God and attempt sometimes to use it for their own purpose. Look at verse 27. Let me stay there for a few minutes. And the king of Assyria commanded, saying, carry the carry there one of the priests whom thou brought from there and let them go and dwell there and let him teach the manner of God to the land. So what gave them all that success, bring some of their priests so they can teach it to our people and everybody, and all our people can have that success. Understand, you'll always be popular when you carry the mantle of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Tell someone, you'll always be popular when you carry the mantle of the Lord. No, I need you to look at somebody and tell them, you'll always be popular 
when you carry the mantle of the Lord. Now, sometimes you're popular because they need you. Sometimes you're popular because they want you. Sometimes you're popular because they can't stand you. Huh. But you're going to be popular. I tell you that you're going to be popular. Here, the issue here shows up and, and make sure we understand what's happening here because in 612 B.C., 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 the dates go, uh, at numbers drop from that time till we get to A.D. Nineveh, a serious capital, would fall to Babylon. 605, it suffers its last defeat. Babylon eventually is used by God to take Judah into captivity in 586 B.C. Let's rehearse this Babylon Babylonian experience. Captivity has taken place. Babylon would eventually be used by God as they go and, and in itself would be defeated by the Persian king Cyrus later on. And then as predicted by Isaiah in Isaiah 45 and 1. Also in Habakkuk 2 verses 5 through 17. In the beginning it was Isaiah and Jeremiah and Habakkuk telling the story that this was coming. In the middle it ends up with Ezekiel and Obadiah and Daniel and Ezra and Nehemiah carrying out the story. But at the end, it still remained of Daniel and Haggai, who has the prophetic future along with Zechariah, giving a millennial view of what the story was all about. And so as Persia releases Israel, then the wheels of divine justice continue to turn. The book of Jeremiah is written right in this period. And Jeremiah would suffer being the bearer of bad news and being carried away way into that. Habakkuk would be running around talking about God, how long we going to be caught up in this situation? But they're all in, somebody said they in bondage. Nah, they in bondage. Their decisions didn't kill them. Their decisions put them in bondage. Mm -hmm. Won't you hear me? Their decisions didn't destroy them. Their decisions locked them up. Mm -hmm. Their decisions didn't, did, did, did not cripple them. Their decisions made them have to take whatever gifts they have and use it wherever they were. Mm -hmm. And so there, Daniel and Ezra and Nehemiah are in the middle. But we understand Daniel is about to become popular. And so we're looking at the book of Daniel because Daniel's getting ready to be popular in the midst of this. He's carried away into captivity. In Daniel 2, he would interpret King Nebuchadnezzar's dream that none of his astrologers and sorcerers could interpret here. And then he's elevated at the end of chapter 2. As a matter of fact, Daniel 2, 48 through 49, because he interpreted that dream, which I'll describe in just a moment here, he, they made him a ruler and a governor over the providence of Babylon. Isn't it interesting? We talk about, we talk about uh, Moses, and we talk about uh, how he, uh, we talk about Joseph, and we talk about those who end up with authority and with power, and how Joseph from the Egypt area became the governor, and then he laid, made room for, for Moses. Here, we don't talk much about Daniel, and his authority, he steps into the same way. And notice what Daniel does in 2 and 8, 2 and, 2 and 49. He requests that the three Hebrew boys, Hananiah, Meshiel, and Azariah, y'all call them Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, mm -hmm, that they get become over the affairs of the province, but Daniel sat at the gate, while well, he sat at the gate with the king. And in Daniel 3, the king makes an idolatrous image of gold and he says, and they made a decree that when the music is played, everybody has to bow. And the Hebrew boys refused to bow. Y'all know the story. I don't have to tell you much about that. And so who else, whoever wouldn't bow will be thrown into this fiery furnace. And so here comes a miracle. Somebody help me say, here comes a miracle. Here's a miracle. You see, see, this is much about your faith. You see, faith is very much about looking towards your future and being excited about it. I'm glad to go into fire as long as God is in the fire with me. Uh -huh. Here is the deal. They end up going into the fire furnace, and the ones who put them in get burnt up and die. Mm -hmm. And when the king finally looks in, he says, Lo, did not we throw in three? There's a fourth one in. And he looks like the son of man. So the king then pulls them out after he's marveled with this, and he promotes them high in the province. He does what Daniel told them to do to, from the beginning. And then again, in, in, in the sixth chapter, Daniel's faith will be tested uh, and his obedience uh, he will find himself 
because he would not stop praying and doing what God told him to do in prayer and praying three times and, and he would not list himself into a posture where he would do nothing but honor Jehovah and lift up who God is he ends up being thrown into the lion's den and in the midst of that lion's den y'all know what happens you see the situation that, uh, that, that, that God sends a calmness uh, and he's in there with the lion like the lion is a pillow he's resting in there and having a time with a ferocious lion and they finally say get him out of there and uh, the king then tells anybody anything you got to say about this guy we gonna kill you cause there's something about what these people got with this God that we can't mess with uh -huh. Somebody here just talk to your neighbor and say, there's something about having God that'll get them off of you. They can't mess with you. They can't destroy you. There's something about having God in your life that won't let them destroy you. I don't care what they think. I don't care what they say. I don't care how they feel. He says, there's something. I ain't going to let them get you. And Daniel in Babylon matches Joseph in Egypt, the dreamer, uh, because in, in their mutual home is this whole thing of being the man of God, the interpreter of dreams, because the national outcome was depending upon it. And so then from chapter 7 through 8 of the book of Daniel, the vision repeats the message to the nations by, about their dynasties and their ultimate demise uh, in, a, uh, in another way. Let me just run through that quickly so you can understand rather than having you read it because some of y'all are not going to go home and read that much um, <laughs> of the Bible. So I'm going to simplify Tell your neighbor, Bishop, going to simplify it for us. Listen here, I want to compare the understanding of the difference between chapter 2 and chapter 7 in the book of Daniel. In chapter 2 with Nebuchadnezzar's dream, he interpreted regarding there was a great image King, oh King Nebuchadnezzar that you saw said. It had a head that was gold. It had arms that was silver. It had a belly of brass. It had feet of iron and clay. And the head ends up representing when Daniel tells him what it is the Babylonian Empire and that it would be taken over arms of silver by the Median Persia Empire. And then underneath that it would be taken over by the stomach of brass and the sides which is the Greek Empire. And down at the bottom that you'll see it's only standing on. You got gold, silver, and brass standing on iron and clay, which is the lesser of all of this, which represents the Roman Empire. And so they didn't get it. Tell somebody they didn't get it. They didn't get it. So he told them, and, and you saw a rock coming out of the mountain, and the rock rolled out of the mountain and hit the image and knocked the image down. And as it continued to roll down the mountain, Daniel 2 tells you the whole story. When it ends up at the end and you see it, the rock overcame all of uh, those three, all of those four dynasties. When we get to the New Testament, it tells the truth and says that that rock was Christ, <laughs> that he tends up wiping out kings because he is the king of kings and lord of lords. Somebody help me say, they didn't get it, they didn't get it. So he told them again in the seventh chapter, but a different way. So in the seventh chapter, he says, listen here, I'm going to use animals. So y'all understand it this way. I'm going to use animals. It's going to be show and tell. You're going to get it. I'm going to give you some animals to look at. And you'll know what, you, what I'm saying here. And he says, and, and, and he says, this way you'll understand I'm not just talking about your kingdom, but I'm talking about your king too. Mm -hmm. So it's your kings and your kingdoms. Somebody said kings and kingdoms. And so he tells them in the seventh chapter, listen here, you know, when, 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 the, when the next one had a dream, the next king had a dream, he says, you saw a lion, a lion that had eagle's wings, which is represented by the Babylonian empire in seven and four. The, then he says, the next one you, you, that is there is a bear, and it represents the media Persian empire in seven five. The next one is a panther, and it is represented here, a panther or leopard, leopard style, represented as the Greek Empire in 7-6. And then there is this nondescript beast in 7-7 seven, seven that had 10 horns that represented the Roman dynasty. And so he pushed all four of them. I know this is a bit much, but I just need y'all to understand kind of how this lays out and how the Bible just layers things to make sure people get a chance to 
understand when he's giving you some prophetic, you're going to have to take a look at and understand how it lays itself. Chapter 7, in chapter 7, three historical kingdoms would be abolished. Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, Xerxes, and Cyrus of, uh, of, of Persia. Alexander, some hundreds of years ago, past, past that, would be the fourth one of, of that Western uh, conglomeration. It would interesting be, interestingly be set up with this Greco-Roman Empire that it would, what would be born out of this would be a tin horn framework, a Western Union with unified currency in exchange to increase the international power because this would become the western power of Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, interesting how this lays itself out because it was not until this last century, within this last century, that they started to shift it and the Italians didn't want to be called just Italian and the Germans didn't just want to be called Germans and, 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 and those in, in France didn't want to just be called the French but they wanted to have a common Europe and in their common Europe they decided they would have a common dollar amount called the Euro to set up and it was a sign and a symbol that these things would have to be set up before Christ could come back and wipe certain things out and put life and put faith back in the posture it needs to be in understand and it would take the coming of the Messiah not for redemption this time but for reconstruction to come and change things in 7-2 Daniel 7-2 says the ancient of days is what they call them the ancient of days when God God shows up himself. He's going to wipe all of those and you're going to know who is the king of kings and who's going to be the Lord of lords. Daniel saw all of this take place. A dream and visions that he had that he had to talk to kings about but he could not put it together for himself. It didn't look like it was going to be a good end so he had challenges with having to look at this because as you know Daniel was not he didn't live long enough to be part of that group that got out of Babylon and went back to Israel and got the restoration that they would have after the 70 years of bondage. And so Daniel saw all of this, but he was caught in that first and second period of all of this. The Babylonian and Media Persian peace, he ended up being caught in, and it burdened him to know that what he would, what he saw. So he needed a word of hope, being in captivity and knowing that back at home, Israel, they were helpless to do anything. Here he is in captivity back at home, they helpless, and they've been taken over as well. This is where we enter into the text. Finally, somebody help me say finally, Bishop. <laughs> this is where the text shows up. And see, this is why I couldn't tell you the text without telling you the backdrop because you needed to understand that this was not an accidental scripture or accidental topic or accidental time. But times had to line itself up to make sure that the opening and the presence and the, and the movement of God would make sense for the next thing that was going to happen here. Daniel 11 and 30 through 32 is where our text literally comes from and listen to how it reads. It says, for the ships of Shittim shall come against him, therefore he shall be grieved and return. I got to stop there. Daniel is still in captivity. Hear me, tell your neighbor, Daniel is still in captivity. And the nations around Israel are at war. Mm -hmm. And so he's in captivity. They don't have control of the home front and the nations around are at war. And he's looking at all of this. The East and the West governments would fight for power between them. At the time of the text, uh, Antiochus uh, Epiphanes out of Syria was fighting Egypt. Uh, but the navy of Chittim, who we use in the scripture, who is Rome, got in the way. And so they got all these countries fights going on at the same time about who's the baddest, who's the strongest, and who's the world power. And, 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 and to all of Israel, the ones in captivity and the ones uh, that are not ruling but stuck it back at home, God says, let me send my people a word. Mm -hmm. Tell your neighbor, no matter what's going on around us, <laughs> God's got a word for you. I wish you would tell somebody else, no matter what you see happening in your atmosphere, 
God's got a word for you. He says, listen, it's rough around you. They fighting, they fighting on, in one, one hand, on the other hand. They wrestling on one side, trying to keep Russia from dealing with one country. They having fights on another side, trying to keep the North Koreans from building up an artillery. They wrestling here in Europe and having their issues, uh, trying to decide who's going to be the strongest power. And then we fighting on the border, trying to figure out how to let, who to let in and who to put out. It looks like all all kinds of mess is going on but in the midst of all of that the word is still the same as it was even in that day tell your neighbor God's got a word for you he said, listen here, don't you let the conditions around you mess you up. Don't you let the conditions around you make you lose your faith. Don't you let the conditions around you and the news around you make you seem like you're not going to make it because just for you, God's got a word. Tell your neighbor, he's got a word. He's got a word with you in mind. He's got a word that's going to bless your life. He's got a word that's going to change your situation. He's got a word that's going to open doors for you. He's got a word that's going to show you how to succeed. He's got a word that's going to give you a chance to be a blessing. He's got a word that's going to show you that you are still the head and not the tail. He's got a word that show you that victory is yours. He's got a word to show you that no matter what it looks, uh, at the end of the day, you're going to be all right. I wish you would tell three people, I'm going to be all right. I'm Listen here, with all of the injustice, with all of the mistreatment, with all the issues, with all the matters, with all the things that's going on, God is saying, don't you worry about that. I, I got you. Somebody, somebody ought to holler, God's got me. God's got me. I got you. You're not going to have to worry about it because at the end of the day, not only will you laugh, just take a good look at where you come from. They could have, ex they tried to extinguish you long time ago. They could have extinguished you when you were in captivity, when your generations couldn't stand up and do all they need to do. They could have wiped you out. They could have tried to keep you from having education, keep you from knowing, keep you from having, keep you from having great jobs, have you having understanding. They tried to block you from being excellent. They tried to tell you what you can have on your block, what you can have in your block. They try to tell you you wouldn't be successful in business. They try to tell you you were dumb. They try to tell you you didn't make it. They said you came from animals. They try to say all kinds of things about you. But I hear God say, I got a word for you. I wish you would just go ahead and shake three hands and say, God's got a word from you. I'm at the end of the day, you ain't going to lose. At the end of the day, you ain't going to have to whine about this. At the end of the day, you ain't going to have to cry about it. At the end of the day, you ain't going to have no issue. God's got a word for you. So he sets them up and sit down, y'all. I got to get through this. He sets them up and said, he has a word. He says, and, 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 and he said, understand and have indignation against the holy, against the holy covenant, which he shall do. He shall even return uh, and have intelligence with him that forsake the holy covenant. And so here comes the problem here. Little Israel who had the covenant with them, that, listen, whatever y'all do fighting each other, don't mess with us. Just leave us alone. Don't mess with us. What's caught in between? Somebody said caught in between. And he discovered, uh, and their leaders discovered that some of the Jews would be his, their spies and betray their own people. <clears throat> uh huh. And so he broke his covenant with Israel so he could stick to uh, with those spies that he had among them. And then verse 31 shows up. The arms shall stand on his part and shall pollute the, the sanctuary of strength and shall take away the sacrifice and they shall place the abomination that make it desolate. What he said, he decided to mistreat them. That's what he's saying because they were accessible and, and possibly could move over and give them power to access their desire by having more of their land in their province. So he desecrated their holy places and stopped their ability to worship. But here comes the problem. He did not know that God places prosperity and sustainability in broken places. <laughs> You can tear down, uh, and they can tear down what belongs to you, but God will build you something better. <laughs> 
<laughs> they can they get, you can be in a position where they try to destroy you, but God will set you up what you would, with what you never thought you would have, and He'll give you more than you ever imagined. I hear the Scripture ringing in my ear that I have not seen, and ear have not heard, and neither has it entered into the hearts of God of man of man the things that God has in store for them. Somebody say, I love them. I love them. So I know God's going to bless me. I love him. I know he's going to make a way for me. I know. I know he's going to make a way for me to live, my family to live. I know he's going to make sure that no matter what, my finances are going to come together. My life is going to be well. I'm going to be have the strength of the Lord in my life. Blessing is going to come my way. I know I'm going to have healing, return, and blessing in my life. I decree a certain thing, and I know it shall be established. God promised me, and I stand on this promise. I depend on the fact that God is not just a one-time God, but he's a every-time God, every time I need him, every time I'm my life that calls on me, every time I pray to him, he's going to make a way for me. Somebody say, I know him, I know him for myself. The old folk used to say, you can't make me doubt him because I know too much about him. I know him. I know he'll wear out my enemy on my behalf. I know I don't have to get back at nobody because God is going to get me up where I can look down on them. I ain't going to have to live in a posture where I'm mad. I can be glad because I know who my redeemer is. Somebody say, God knows how to handle broken places. Hold on a minute. Some of y'all ain't getting what I'm saying here. Any of y'all ever had a broken place in your life? Anybody ever left you for down, left you for dead, thought you wasn't going to make it, looked at you, said you were doomed? Somebody ever said you weren't going, you wouldn't conquer this particular thing? But look at your neighbor and say, but look at God, look at God. They said I wouldn't be nothing, but God turned nothing into something. They said I wouldn't uh, be great, but God turned uh, uh, lack, uh, lack into place. He knows how to bless me. Somebody help me brag on God. Say, he knows how to bless me. I love the scripture. He lays it out here. You see, God was about to tell them three things. And the first thing he was going to tell them, it opened up and it began to show in verse 32. And he says, such as do wickedly, wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by his flatteries. So he's going to get some of them in the house to be ones that will walk with them. You see, as long as you live, you'll have some disloyalty around you. <laughs> Somebody help me just go and tell your name as long as you live, you're going to have some disloyalty around you. You shouldn't be messed up by disloyalty because people who, who like you, they like you for different reasons. <laughs> and you got to understand it's important for you to research why they like me. <laughs> because if they like me for what I have, uh, then uh, when I don't have it, they ain't going to like me no more. <laughs> if they like me for what I do, uh, then when I stop doing it, they ain't going to like me no more. <laughs> but if they like me for who I am, somebody tell your neighbor, it's your research you got to do. <laughs> You got to find out why they knocking on your door. You got to find out why they ringing your bell. You got to find out why they want to talk to you. You, you got to find out why they want relationship with you because if they like you for who you are, they'll stand up with you in the midst of, uh, uh, of, uh, of all that you do because and all that you are because they'll see that. Notice what began to happen. God was saying, listen here, Israel, where you're going in life, you won't have to worry about sellouts and traitors in your destiny because your future is in my hands. Somebody need to help me just tell your neighbor my future is in his hands. <laughs> And so uh, what shall then be the attribute uh, of those who will be in this posture? Let's get to that next part of verse 32. Be here in Daniel 11. He says, but the people that know their God shall be strong. Let's stop there. <laughs> tell your neighbor, the people who know their God <laughs> shall be strong. <laughs> God is saying that everybody that knows me is going to get strength from me. You're going to get strength and not know where you got it from. You're going to go through things and not realize, I don't know how I made it, but God helped me make it. 
God's going to give you strength. It's going to like it comes out of nowhere. He's going to give you the power to stand like you never thought you could stand before. And notice what he says. And the third part of this is that you deal with those who are sellouts. That's number one. Number two, but you're going to be strong in the midst of that. And the third thing is, because you're strong, you will do exploits. Tell your name, I'm going to do exploits. That's why the same thing for next year is, uh, this is our year of exceptional exploits. Uh, tell your neighbor, this is our year for exceptional exploits. Hold on, some of y'all don't get what I'm saying, so let me just lay it out for you so you can understand. Tell your neighbor, God's going to wear out of my future by blessing me everywhere I am. Because when you're doing exploits here, exploits as a noun, it means that I'm going to have some bold and daring feats, that I'm going to be in a position where I have some moving and some, uh, some working deeds. I'm going to have some acts uh, of faith and life that's going to be a blessing. I'm going to be able to have some adventures this next year, some escapades, some enterprising, some undertakings. I, I'll be able to see achievement where I didn't see achievement before now. I'm about to accomplish what I never accomplished before. I'm getting ready to attain what I've never ever had before. I'm getting ready to find triumph in the midst of the handiwork, what I put my hand to. God's going to bless it because God moved my hand from something so he can put my hand on something else. And as he put my hand on something else, I'm going to be blessed right where somebody say exploit exploits, uh, exceptional exploits. Uh, I need somebody to holler in the room and say exceptional exploits. I wonder if you're ready for God to give you some exceptional exploits to do for you what you cannot do for yourself to bless you in ways you didn't know you are about to be blessed. As a matter of fact, let me say it to you like this. Uh, God is about to take your life into some brand new wonderful places. Uh, he's about to bless you like you've never been blessed before. So I want you to expect a year of great new things. Uh, tell your neighbor, I expect a year. Go on, tell somebody of great new things. I'm expecting new things to happen. I'm expecting God to get me things. I've been working toward it. I've been expecting it. I made some changes in 2023. I set myself up because I know God wants to do something new in me. I've been faithful because he rewards faithfulness. And I know it. So all I got to do now is understand that 2024 is going to be a year where I win because I stay strong. Somebody talk to your neighbor and say, you're going to win because you stay strong. I wish you would go ahead, get up from your seat and mess with somebody. Tell them, whatever you do, stay strong. Don't let nobody move you from your posture where you are. You got to be strong in every place you are. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Watch God do it because as you do it, God's going to bless you like you have never been blessed before. Oh, you don't have to be shamed. Tell somebody, I'm going to stay strong. They thought they knocked me down, but when they see me next time, I'm going to be up doing what I never imagined I'd be able to do. My God, I'm seeing what I've never a scene. I'm getting ready to do what, as a matter of fact, look at somebody say, I see the strength in you. I'm, listen, God's been watching your toil. God's been watching your burden. God's been watching your storm. God's been watching your issue. God's been watching you go through. Uh, but look out, God is also about to bring you out. Uh, I wish somebody to holler, God is about to bring me out. When you know what's getting ready to happen, uh, you can get excited about the fact that God is about to bring you out uh, and do some wonderful things in your life. Uh, hallelujah here. Understand, so he uh, tells us you got to stay strong uh, and do some exceptional exploits. Uh, tell somebody do exceptional exploits. Uh, now sit down, y'all. I got to give you a few more prophetic things attached to this. And then I'm going to walk on out of here and tell y'all goodbye. Uh -huh. <laughs> the first thing I want to talk to you about is, is that understand there's a prophetic declaration that goes with this. I've given you the word. I've given you the onlook. I've given you the posture. I've given you the position. Now it's up to you to make some decisions. And so because it's decision time, I want to lay out to you several five different points of grace that are attached to how you need to handle here this in this prophetic declaration. The first point of grace is this. 2024 will be sprinkled with times of great productivity. Mm -hmm. Say it's going to be great productivity. 
but I need you to hear me clearly and not let this slip through because I don't want you to shout over something and not get the meat of it. I want you to understand that this will be a year where personal growth makes it normal to challenge your personal excuses. <laughs> They ain't going to have to, nobody needs to tell you to stop your excuses. You're going to have to tell yourself that's too much excuse. <laughs> You're going to find yourself saying, I know better than this. Somebody here talk to your neighbor, go on, say, tell you them, say, you're going to find yourself, I know better than this. <laughs> I can't let this mess me up. I can't let this stop me can't let this block me. I know better than this. I got to wipe all my personal excuses. I, I got too many. I got to keep going. It's a year filled with seasons of glory. Mm -hmm. Somebody said, you got seasons of glory coming. Daniel 2 and 21 says, it is God who changes the times and the seasons. He moves kings and setteth up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to them of understanding. What is he saying here? Seasons shifting uh, will work in your favor. So when the seasons shift, it's going to work in your favor. So don't get mad with changing. The changing is going to bless you. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody tell your neighbor the season shifting is gonna work in my favor. I didn't hear y'all. Just the season shifting is gonna work in my favor. This is gonna be a year where well doing becomes perpetual winning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just because you do well, you're going to find yourself winning on all fronts. Tell your neighbor, I'm about to win on all the fronts. <laughs> because you do well in it, God's going to make sure you do not suffer because of it here. Yeah. Let me also add to this. It's going to be a year where your purposeful potential literally becomes your reality. That you won't have to be sitting back talking about, I would have, should have, could have. But God's going to let you have a brand new reality. Because of this year, we're successful lasting takes place it's going to equate to great private and personal and public reward he's going to make sure that you're going to end up being blessed like you've never been blessed somebody help me say sprinkle with productivity sprinkle with productivity but let me give you number two I told you we'll five them the second one speaks to the call of duty it is your obligation now and your time to become both an extender and a connector mm -hmm. you remember I talked about extenders last week and connectors and I talked about the ratchet wrench and I talked about how you have a ratchet but you got to have an extender to get to some places before you put the the bolt the bolt uh, the thing that will hit the bolt and begin to the socket on there so you can actually turn it there's some places now some of us had to work on cars when we were young because mm -hmm. my dad had a habit saying listen here if you you want the car, you're going to have to fix it yourself. And so we had to get ratchet sets. And sometimes we had to uh, learn how to take the carburetor off. Uh, take the, uh, and take out, uh, when we had a starter issue, we had to learn with the starter that sometimes if you can't get it to start on the street, uh, what you need to do is get your hammer, go to the bottom, uh, hit the bottom and hit the starter, know where the starter is, and turn the key at the same time. And it'll turn because the reason it's not turning is because the spring is not going into the bending that goes into the flywheel that makes it turn when you turn the wheel. Coming from the ignition source, and so it can move again for you. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm just, uh, I'm just saying, so we have to learn uh, how to how to be self-mechanics uh, and how to work sometimes, and sometimes you can have a wrench, but it's uh, but the wrench, if you don't have an extender, you won't be able to reach the nut, no, nut, uh, and you got to be able to make sure you can get farther, so you need the connector on the end of that, so you can begin to make sure that you can make it. You got it these days, in 2024, you got to be an extender and a connector. Somebody said, tell you, you got to be an extender and a connector. You can't get away without being an extender and a connector because as an extender, you are to give greater reach and greater access to the purpose of God in God's atmosphere. As a matter of fact, and as a connector, you are to give life to them who you share godly relationship with. So you got to be hooked up and you got to reach them first before you can hook up with them. You cannot do that. I'm going to text somebody Jesus. You need to call, talk to people.
people. You cannot do that. I sent them an email. No, 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 no. If, if it took an email for you to be saved, you'll be unsaved right now. <laughs> Somebody had to talk to you. You got to go out your way, carry the message of Christ everywhere you are. As an extender, you got to expect your influence to reach into places that you have never tapped into. And as a connector, you got to expect to fit into places that will that you will affect change and promote the progress of ministry in the future. As an extender, you got to stay connected until God says you released. Oh Lord, have mercy. <laughs> you don't get a chance. When you are extender, they say, okay, I'm tired of this. They're not turning for me. You got to stay hooked up because it's not about you don't provide the power. God provides the power. The source comes from the ratchet. You, the one who can pull, the one who pushes is the one who has the power. And understand, because where he plants your gifts and your callings, you, you will be the lifetime that carries the flow. And so you got to stay extended because they will ever ever be changed if you let them go here yeah. and as a connector you must tighten your grip on what you have faith for because agreement will be the catalyst for uh, corporate change here understand I need to tell you enjoy the blessing of being a connector somebody here tell your neighbor enjoy the blessing of being a, a connector go on tell them enjoy the blessing tell them of being a spiritual connector because guess what that blessing is that blessing is legitimacy talk to your neighbor and say that blessing is legitimacy because this is what has been the problem with people who will connect with you in, in churches in times and in lives up to now too many people hook up with you but they ain't legitimate you need some legitimate somebody tell your neighbor say this next year I'm going to be known for my legitimacy listen then that's what you want to make Make sure that wherever you are, people can say whatever they want to say about you. But at the end of the day, they're going to have to say something real about them. Somebody said they, they the real deal. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, just in case you don't know it, I'm the real deal. Tell me. You don't have to pretend and be pretentious. Uh, understand legitimacy is attached to this. Uh, this is the time to make sure these three things, uh, that your message is attached to your mission uh, and that your mission is attached to your ministry. Let me say them again. Tell your neighbor, your message uh, needs to be attached to your mission uh, and your mission uh, needs to be attached to your ministry. Uh, let me just break those down to you here. You see, in message, you'll realize that you'll be known by what you declare, by what you say, by what you do, and what you mean by all of it. And now understand, that's just the message. But by your mission, here's the point. Never neglect a moment to communicate and link uh, with your care, your cause, and your purpose uh, in your mission. This is what's important uh, to you and why you must embrace it because what it will mean to your atmosphere you got to make sure you respect your mission. You can't forget what your mission is. Listen here, you didn't get up to sing the song to make somebody feel good. You got up to sing the song because you wanted to carry the message of Christ. You were not asked to pray so you can, so they can hear you crew. Oh, no, ain't nobody wanted that. Tell you pray because I understand that you can touch God. I need you to speak to me where you can change my life. Shift me and give me what I need. My my mission is that everywhere I am I gotta be effective for God and effective for my atmosphere. The message, the mission, but also the ministry here. Because the ministry is the evidence of your future should be the connecting of what you mean, what you stand for literally being and ending up with being what you actually do. Mm -hmm. That if you mean it and if you stand for it, we ought to see you doing it. Somebody said you got to be in tie and it tied up with your message, your mission, and your ministry. That gives you legitimacy. So they don't walk around here and say, yeah, 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 you got a backward collar on, but you fake. Yeah, yeah, you go to church every week, but you phony. The whole deal is you got to make sure you are handling your business and that you don't let business outside of you handle you. You got to make sure you're taking care of what you need to take care of so you're walking the walk and 
talking the talk. Can they help me here? Tell your neighbor, make it your mission to be legitimate. Huh? Tell, somebody say, you got to be legitimate. Then I told you, here's the next one here. Because not only do you have to be legitimate, you got to expect to be known as authentic. Mm. <laughs> somebody here, tell your neighbor, be authentic here. Yeah. People sick of phony stuff. Listen here, you can't be a cubic zirconium Christian. Uh, understand, you got to be able to handle uh, uh, handle the truth of who you are. Understand, just because you go to church, you can go to church and be costume jewelry. You got to understand that when you come to church, you got to be the real thing. Uh, once you tell somebody, about, I'm not costume jewelry. Listen here, I pray for real. I know him for real. I got him in my life for real. I love him for real. Ain't nothing cost him about me. I'm literally in a posture where I love him and have relationship with him. Understand, 2024 is a great time where we will commonly express who God is to us at a greater level than we define, attempt to define who God is to us. We're going to express it more than we try to define it. We're going to stop trying trying to uh, tell somebody why God, we're going to tell you God is. <laughs> it's a difference between the common conversation here. And understand the closer you get to God, here's the great blessing coming out of it. Get ready to have the best relationship uh, you ever had with God. Uh, would you tell your neighbor, get ready to have the best relationship you've ever had with God. No, no, no. I need you to go ahead and bother somebody. If you got to tap them on the shoulder, say, get ready to have the best relationship you ever had with God. Understand, real relationship is from our heart. And that relationship is about to outweigh uh, any description that we can come with from our mind. <laughs> that when you are it, you don't have to pray, you don't have to tell anybody who you are. You don't have to run around and describe yourself. I'm a Christian. I'm a, you don't have to say who you are. Just be who you are. <laughs> I understand God is about to change how we talk about him because he's going to be better to you than you can ever put in words regarding him uh, that if you uh, understand you're going to be a living example somebody help me say I am a living example when God gives you opportunities to be who he wants you to be he'll let you be in a living example they won't know how you got where you are how you have what you have why you do what you do but God is going to make an example I wish somebody who got it would throw your hands up and say God make an example out of me if you want to use somebody I hear Isaiah I need you to use me if you want to do something God God I want you to do it with me God if you want to bless somebody God let me be that blessing here and so here comes the opportunity here because the keys to success among us will be these simple little keys and the simple keys start off with this sharing time to put God's love in unloving places Talk to your neighbor and say, you got to put God's love in unloving places. You can't sit up and be the one who joins in with unloving situations. When things happen that don't represent God, you got to stand up and say, God must be glorified in this. This is the posture here because learning, learning that it's better to be real than it is having to be right. <laughs> and this is where believers often miss it. Sometimes we want to be right so bad, we forget how important it is that we be real here. It's time to have godly wisdom based on understanding that will not allow us to ever again become bored when enlightenment is available. And my pastor says God's wisdom will teach our knowledge how to behave. And every once in a while, we need God to step in and tell our knowledge, shut up for a minute. <laughs> I told you to listen, it ain't about you being right. It's about my will taking place here. <laughs> and understand you might be right, but it ain't the way I want this done. You got to understand that his will and being real has to be the essence of how he wants things to take place. <laughs> understand here, and when you look up at your life this next year, you're going to look at it and say, I've never seen it like this before. <laughs> I wish there were a few people who could say, I can't wait for that. I can't <laughs> Yeah. Can't wait to wake up in the morning and say, I've never seen it like this before. I told you just a few weeks ago to take these words and to use them every day. If God is so good to me like he is today, I can't wait to tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, tell you, I can't wait to tomorrow. 
he's so good right now. If he beats himself out tomorrow and what he's done for me today, I might have to shout and praise him all day long. <laughs> If God does more for me than he's already done, I'm going to have to spend all my time on the altar glorifying and magnifying his name because God is a good God. Somebody ought to help me tell your neighbor he is a good God. When you recognize how good he is, you recognize that you are not where you are by mistake, but you are where you are uh, on purpose here. And I want you to know here that all of 2024, you will realize that you, that you have not just been looking for God, but while you've been looking for him, God's been looking at you. <laughs> the whole time through. He's watching his work to perform it. He's looking at you because he wants to prove that he can bless and you and know whatever situation you find your way in. Can I give you just a couple of scripture here? Psalm 139, 17 and 18 says, how precious are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand and, 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 and when I am awake I am still with thee tell your neighbor I can't believe it that every time I look up you got me on your mind you prove that you won't be alive you prove how good you are to me when I think about how you think about me I realize that I'm never alone and by myself others might forget me but you never forget me nor will you forsake me Any Anytime I need you, you show up on my behalf. Uh, Psalm 33 and 18 and 19 says, uh, Behold, the eye is upon them that fear him, uh, upon them that hope in his mercy. What it's saying here, to deliver their soul from death uh, and to keep them alive in famine. Uh, so he says, we are covered in God in ways that we would never imagine. Uh, somebody help me say, it's God who protected you all the way here this morning. Tell God protect you all the way here. Listen here, you don't know who got hit in a, by a car. You don't know whose tire blew out. You don't know what happened and somebody had an emergency, but God kept you. And here's the deal with 2024. It's a promise. He says, I'm going to make sure you can build on your testimony daily. Tell your neighbor, get ready to build on your testimony daily. I'm going to show you how good I am. When you wake up, you're going to have to say thank you again. When you look at how I bless your life, you're going to have to say wonderful. When you look at how God blesses you, you're going to have to say marvelous. When you look at his hand on your situation, you're going to have to say incredible. Talk to your neighbor and say, I'm looking for God to blow my mind. Now, I understand it's hard for some of y'all to depict this because I told you that faith is something you got to work with. Understand, faith puts you in a unique posture. That's why I started out with it. Faith is about looking towards the future and being excited about it. So I'm not upset when some of y'all have a hard time saying amen. I'm preaching for God to increase your faith, but I'm preaching to the ones who got it right now who see that God's about to do something brand new uh, in their life. Uh, and they realize I can't let this moment pass me by because I realize that right after this, uh, I'm going to need God to come through for me like he never has before. Uh, listen here, if I understand anything here. I do understand that God is a good God. Uh, and if I had known that God would bless me like this, uh, I would have pursued him more a long time ago. Is anybody here can say he changed me? He brought me. He healed me. And he delivered me. And I'm too far in my faith and much too close in my victory to keep my testimony to myself. The fact is that God is a blessed God, blessing God. And what a blessing it is that as we enter into a year of exceptional exploits that they will be connected to the benefit and every benefit we gained in our year of unsolicited abundance. So God is not just bringing you new. What you're going to get is an enhanced version Tell your neighbor all my blessings are about to get an upgrade. I need you to talk to your neighbor and say all my blessings are about to get an upgrade. 
I know I'm giving y'all a whole lot, but I gotta tell you that I'm on the brink of an upgrade, that God is about to give me an upgrade. He's about to do what I never, ever expected to take place. And I understand here is a force upgrade for those who believe, because he does not care what you missed, and he does not care what you messed up, but what he cares about is you having his heart, and him being in your heart. And just like he that like they do men do on the phone. They'll hit your phone and tell you you have an upgrade coming. Do you want to download it now? Or do you want to set a time to download it later? Somebody talk to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I think I'll take my down up the I think I need him to give me my upgrade now. I want him to download my future. I want him to download my blessings. As a matter of fact, I like to see it while I'm on the way to it. I want to know that God is doing everything he said he would do. And because I get a chance to do this and grab hold of all of my unsolicited abundance, can somebody say he's been great to me all 2023? Well, I can't praise him for you for that. Look at your neighbor and say you got to praise him for yourself. If God has been good to you, you need to praise him for yourself. <laughs> oh, I tried to tell you uh, that you need to glorify him every chance you get. Uh, in January, I told you uh, that we can always call on God. Uh, in Psalm 116, 4 through 7, uh, it says all you got to do is communicate uh, because God is your number one supporter. Uh, and he'll help you when you can't help yourself. And God will insist that whatever you are going through, that all you do is take it and put it in his hands. Whatever comes against you, know that God can't switch it. Then we moved to February. When we got to February, God told me to remind you of seven things he gets out of your relationship. He gets sharing his joy with us. He gets surprising us with blessings. He, see, he likes seeing us work on our victory. He likes watching us embrace our confirmation. He likes seeing us enjoy our success. He likes cheering us on as we triumph over the enemy. He likes enjoying seeing us manifest his ma majestic name. Then I got to March, and I told you in March that, listen, and what you should do is make life make sense that you didn't start off where you are right now. Work your way while you can. Some of us need while we're working not to get mad about the journey, but schedule you some joy moments. Y'all remember that? Tell your neighbor, schedule your joy moments. Don't be sitting around whining over things that you ought to be praising God over. Schedule you some joy moments that even while you're sick, you throw your hands up and say, thank you, Jesus. Even while you're down, you say, God's going to still make a way for me. Talk to your neighbor and schedule your joy moment. You got to know he's going to take care of you. And when you think about your favor, your joy will automatically manifest. Because when you celebrate God in your joy, strip shows up. Then I told you in April, be clear about who God is to you. God is the reason I do the things I do. Tell somebody, God is the reason I do the things I do. Be careful with me. Because whether you know it or not, God is my emergency contact. When the enemy comes against me, God will come in and give me overflow. Give me increase and give me harvest. Some of y'all can shout about it and say, I got my increase. I got overflow and I got harvest. 
in my overflow. I had to catch it when I got my increase. I had to make room for it. When I got my harvest, I had to reap it. Whatever way God wanted me to go after it, I made up my mind I'm going after God. Somebody here help me preach here. Tell your neighbor whatever you do, don't stop going after God. Every time you can bless his name, every time you think about his goodness, every time you see his handiwork, break out in a praise. Worship him like you never have before. Tell your neighbor, don't stop going after God. Why is that so important? Because September, I told you that. The grace is on you. Tell your neighbor, the grace is on you. I don't care what they say about you. The grace is on you. You are God's blessed. Things are going to shift because God's got you in mind. With your bona fide people say, grace is on me. Then praise God for the grace. <laughs> when you know who you are, when you know who you are, when you know who you are, you make sure you bless his name. When you know who you are, you let the world know, I live because of him. In him I live. In him I move. In him I have my being. When you know who you are, you don't have to be persuaded to give him glory. You just thank him because he's wonderful. Somebody who loves him and knows that you owe him. Lift your hands up. Throw your head back and tell him, yeah, yeah. tell one person it's about to get exceptional around here. It's about to get exceptional around here. Last week I told you, I brought you up all year, but last week I told you I'm a spiritual weapon and I'm loaded with benefits. Somebody tell your neighbor, I'm a spiritual weapon, and I'm loaded with benefits. It is God who daily loadeth. Somebody say, it's God who daily loadeth. Laid, loadeth me with benefits. Somebody holler, I'm loaded. Oh, Laba Somebody holler, load it. Somebody throw your hands and say, I'm loaded. They don't know me yet. They're going to know me by the time I get to next year. I'm loaded. 
Ben is all somebody holler loaded, loaded, loaded. You ought to tell him you ain't seen nothing yet. Wait till God does the next thing in me. It's gonna be crazy. I'm loaded. I'm loaded. If you know how much joy he put in me, whoo, I told you this year I got enough joy to praise God for this whole road. Tell him I got enough. <laughs> I'm loaded. Last week I told you that I know that being loaded to the faithless means nothing to the faithless. But to the grateful, it's a reminder to thank God. That being loaded means nothing to the forgetful. But to the rescue, those who've been rescued, it's a reminder to remember him again. Being loaded means nothing to the forgetful. It doesn't mean anything to the atheists. But to the saved and delivered, it's a reminder to testify again. Being loaded means nothing to the lost. But to the Redeemer, it's a mind to worship him again. It's a reminder. Being loaded means nothing to the doubter. But to expecting believers, is a reminder to hope again. <sighs> Being loaded means nothing to the selfish and arrogant. But to the interceder, it's a reminder to pray again. Being loaded means nothing to the unbeliever. But to the faithful, it's a reminder to trust him again. Being loaded to the to the means nothing to the excitable, but to the praiser, it's a reminder to shout again. So if you're not the faithless, the forgetful, the atheist, the lost, the doubter, the selfish, the unbeliever, and the excitable, but you're the grateful, you're the rescued, you're the saved and delivered, the the redeemed, the expecting believer, the interceder, the faithful and the praising saint. Being loaded means that you're going to thank him. You're going to remember him. You're going to testify about him. You're going to worship him. You're going to pray to him. You're going to hope. You're going to trust him again. And you're not going to hesitate to shout about it. Somebody need to open your mouth and say, I'm loaded, so I can't help myself. The grace is on me. <laughs> I'm loaded, I can't help myself. Good things are going to happen in my atmosphere. I'm God's child. Woo. And because of it, blessing is going to come in the places where I am. I belong to him. And even if I make mistakes, wherever I end up, just like with Israel, he won't let me use the excuse that I have not been anointed and appointed, that I have to be wherever I am and do all that I'm supposed to do because I am of him. Somebody in this room need to make that decision with your life because those who've made it have this testimony, Psalm 41 and 11, by this I know that thou favorest me because my enemies have not triumphed over me. He constantly makes a way for me. He constantly keeps me. He constantly keeps doing great things whereof I am glad. Somebody you're glad about it. Come on, open your own mouth and give a roll in. Go back to me. Oh, how I love him so. He's the keeper of my soul. He's the keeper of my soul. Yes, yes, yes. He's the one that makes doors of the church is open. You need to make a decision for God in your life. Come from where you are. Oh, how I love you so. Come from wherever you are. Come. He's 
He's a keeper, my soul. Y'all don't let him walk by himself. Come on, man. I see you. Yeah. He's the keeper, my soul. Yes, yes, yes. Someone else got to make that decision today. He's the one that makes me whole. Oh, I. if you need prayer, the elders on the outside, you go to them. You so. Yes, yes, yes. He's the keeper. He's the keeper. Listen. The believers in here, and your sisters and brothers, that tell your name, I am your sibling. Tell them I'm your sibling. And because of that, I'm in a place. I'm in a place where I want the family together. Today, if you're in this room today, and I want you to know, you don't have to be by yourself with your faith. We are a church that loves you, that loves loving you, that loves together. Tell your neighbor, I am your sibling. I am. A, if you need a place to exercise your faith, you in this place today, make this choice with your life. I'll walk you down. I'll come with you. You could be a part of this family. You're the keeper. My. So, talk to your neighbor. Talk to your take. Talk to your neighbor. He's the keeper of my soul. No matter how old, how young you are, he's the one that makes me whole. Oh, how I love you so. The keeper, you're the keeper. My soul says, Yes, yes, yes. My soul says, Yes.
Let's turn to one neighbor. Turn to one neighbor, if you don't mind. Hold him on the shoulder. Sing this words. She. Y'all know what to do. She. That's it. Everybody connect. She. Let all heaven. Let all heaven. Whisper in there, yeah, things about to get great for you. And I Tell them it's getting ready to get great for you. It's getting ready to get great for you. It's getting ready to get great for you. King! Lift those hands up. And kingdom! Lift those hands up. Shall all pass away. Hey, but there's something about that name. Somebody say, my change is about to come. My blessings are about to come. Ah, but there's something. There's something. Something about. Something about that name. Master, 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 
master. Master, master, master. Oh, 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 master, master, master. I want you to tell one person, he's my savior. Savior, savior, savior. Savior, savior, savior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Savior, savior, savior. He is my savior. <laughs> Tell somebody he made a way for me too. Give God a great praise for what's coming. For what's coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's our giving time. Amen. Glory to God. Somebody just said exceptional exploits, ex exceptional exploits. Ma, 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 ma.
God, we love you. And as we even give today, we're ready to see results. We're going to be bold and daring. That's what exploits is all about. We're going to undertake adventurous enterprises. We're going to have achievements and accomplishments. And we're going to watch your handiwork in us attain triumph for and with and through us. So, Lord, we join on in this dialogue today. I don't struggle to give, so I don't struggle to live. How I decide to give shows up in how I'm able to live. What I have in my hands and my heart does not match the blessings you have on my life. Teach me to give the way you would have me live. I'll bless you with my life for the rest of my life. Increase, overflow, and favor, all three belong to me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for unsolicited abundance and for exceptional exploits. Amen and amen. Come on, sing me in Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Please don't make them walk over you if you don't have to. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, oh, oh. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Savior, 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 Savior. Hallelujah. We know that this is a Sunday that we are dedicated to be a blessing to our leader. Amen. And so I'm going to ask those of you who are prepared. I know some have already done it electronically, but if you would just come now and let's give our Christmas appreciation love gift to Bishop. Come on, let's do that now. Amen. Amen. Come on, move quickly. I'll never give up because I can. Always make it with you.
never give up. They said I would not see my dreams. They said my hopes are too high. They said keep climbing up your mountains, but don't look at the sky. But when I stand at my highest place and realize there's much more space, my arms can stretch, Lord, where you abide. For joy is real. And your love can't hide So I'll never give up Because I can always make it Amen. There are two ordinances of the church, amen, that we observe here. And the first is baptism. And if you would turn your attention to the back, we're going to enter into that. Wade in the water. Amen. Baptism is one of the two ordinances of the church that we observe. It signifies our identification with the life, death, burial and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The second is the Lord's Supper which we'll observe momentarily. We do that to commemorate our Lord Jesus' life, death, burial and resurrection. In Romans 6, 1 through 6 you'll find these words. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism unto death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Amen. Amen. My sister, Shalanda McGee. Hallelujah. Based upon the perfection of your faith and in obedience to Christ, the great head of the church, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Be baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen. And now we will observe the second ordinance of the church. And this is a very sacred and solemn, yet joyous time to come together as family, hallelujah, and to commemorate, amen our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In 1 Corinthians 11, you'll find these words. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, so whoever eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread, and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh 
damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Gracious God, our Father, we humbly bow, Lord, in submission unto you. And thank you for this opportunity, Lord God, to be able to, to commemorate our Lord and Savior's death, to commemorate his resurrection. We thank you, Lord God, for coming together as family. And we pray, Father, that we would have this opportunity, Lord God, to ask that you would forgive us of all of our sins, all of our trespasses against you, all of our trespasses against our neighbors and our family and our friends. We ask, oh God, that you would restore us, God, to a right relationship with you and that you would have, our, have your way in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. At this time, you will be directed by the ushers that you will come and receive the bread and the wine and you will return to your seats at such time when we've all been served, we will eat and drink together. everyone been served? Amen. Jesus' manner with his disciples was that he took the bread. He blessed the bread. Yeah. He broke the bread. Then he gave the bread. Just like he took each of us from various places in life. He blessed us broke us before giving us to the world. Yeah. Let us eat together. This cup represents the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It was shed for the remission of sins. For without the remission 
the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Let us drink together. Amen. Please pass your cups to the end of the aisles. wonderful, marvelous service we have had. Amen. Amen. Anybody excited? Anybody excited? Don't fool me now. Exceptional exploits. Well, as we prepare to depart from this place, but never from the presence of God, I just want you to hug somebody. Get them, get them real good. Tell them, I love you, and there is nothing that you can do about it. Uh, we speak peace, safety, and relief over God's people in the mighty name of Jesus. We call it forth in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Be blessed.